Hey everybody, it's Casual Boops coming at you with another video, and today we're going to be covering the community tournament playoffs. Uh, if you don't know what I'm talking about, we'll look at the last video. We had a tournament where there was basically tech tree tanks only. There was one tier 10, two tier 9s, and three tier 8s, and no wheelie boys allowed. So it was kind of a weird tournament, and it was kind of, I thought it was kind of fun, uh, interesting thing. Um, also, um, I know a lot of people who give me some positive, sometimes some negative feedback. I have forgotten all of it. So please, if we end up doing something like this again, help me put in the comments below, like, what do I need to be doing differently next time? Well, maybe somebody said fog of war, would be a really good idea. So you can't see what the enemy tank composition is right away. That's an interesting thing. Stuff like that, whatever, like, whatever you think could help make it better next time. Um, let me know. Let me know in the comments, like, if there's anything, if there's anything awkward or that could have been improved or whatever, maybe like the playoffs should have been best of five, somebody said too. So stuff like that, let me know. So that way, if somebody, if we end up doing this in the future, I can go back to the comments in this video and say, oh no, we're going to do it differently because of whatever. So um, anyways, uh, so let me know in the comments what, whether you liked it or didn't, if you didn't participate, that's fine. If you watched it even on Twitch, let me know how it went. And what you thought of it um so I, i'm gonna i'm gonna showcase now the two the final game it was it's, it's a best of three because it's attack defense and um between the two the two teams that uh they got to the finals and i will say before we start some things that you don't if you're not familiar with competitive game modes because this is kind of this is competitive right smaller teams um typically how this goes is like you're gonna see some use of some very key positions right i'm gonna have the mini map a little bit bigger pay attention to the mini map uh, and I'm going to try to call out things, but it, there's, there's a lot of stuff happening all at the same time, right? It's not like a normal replay where I would just be focusing on what one person is doing. I'm going to be floating around the map and trying to, to demonstrate kind of what's happening because the whole team is working as one cohesive unit, right? If you have one tank in a position, the enemy tank pushes into that with two, it's 2v1, that one guy's going to die, right? It's not like random battles where you don't know what your teammates are going to do. You can depend on your teammates to do everything uh, with you cooperatively, because that's the whole point. And so you have one person that is, uh, that's called the caller, that is going to be watching the game, deciding who does what. And when you move over here, it's like the chess mat, you know, the person with playing the chess pieces on the chessboard. Um, so it's very like, things are going to be happening fast. Um, so kind of sit back and enjoy the show. I'll try to give you some highlights and I'm, I'm trying not to miss anything, but also keep an eye on the mini map and you'll see where people are using positions. Like both maps are both, both games are on cliff, which is a game, um, a map that's in, um, random battles quite a bit. So maybe you might see people using positions in a way that you didn't expect. Maybe you can use this in, in random battles too. Cause I know there's a couple that I was like, Oh snap, look at that. That was pretty interesting. Um, so without further ado, we'll get into the gameplay. Oh, I'm sorry, I missed one other thing. The other thing is that hit points are crucial, right? In in competitive game modes, especially smaller teams like this where there's only six, hit points are crucial. Losing 500 hit points is a big deal because it's all about, you know, um, if somebody becomes a one shot, they're gonna they're gonna take your tank out of the game. It's it's having as many hit points as you possibly can. It just is allows you to keep your your tank in the game longer. It's just it's everything is so min maxed, and so it's very crucial. So when someone crosses and they take a hit for it, that's a big deal. Um, so there, there, I think I've covered it all, and we'll get into the game now. Okay, so in this particular game, this is again this is the final where this the team that I'm following here is going to be attacking, and their their team comp is a one CS sixty three, a T ten, a Skoda T fifty, two Canarvans, and a Charioteer. And so we're gonna be following the charioteer, just uh, so you won't see him on the mini map. It'll look like he's uh, he's um, he's the he's the perspective of this replay. Um, but yeah, and the enemy team has a CS63, an ML2, a bat chat, uh, tier nine bat chat, an IS3, an object 416, and a borsig. So pretty interesting, you know. You can kind of tell, you know, uh, some some pretty. Um, consistent things here about about who is doing what and you'll see you'll notice one thing I want to point out here the CS is running to the mid and you've got this charioteer that we're following sitting right here pre-aiming what is he looking at he's looking at the CS 63 who gets clapped for 511 because the charioteer has that dank hash round right it's uh the same hash round as the centurion 71 uh that has like 210 millimeters of pen and does some silly damage and so just being able to slap their tier 10 for 500 damage for free is just a big big deal um and now we're just gonna you know that we've got two guys on the hill you're also trying very hard to get information right you notice the bat chat uh the enemy bat chat is using this this particular uh rock behind d 
d4 as cover right and that's that's a very commonly used little pocket i think it's a little bit overpowered because the other side doesn't have a pocket like that but when you're in that pocket it's very hard to dig you out and so those positions are very very powerful because you can sit there and be annoying and shoot and then so like that t10 can't really be aggressive because if he moves up he's going to get shot by the bat chat in the side but they also can't dump in and kill the bat chat very easily so it's very interesting um, I'm not surprised to see somebody there. Very standard position to be used in Clan Wars. And, and again, you can probably see uh, a situation to be using it in, in random battles too, if you if you want to. But otherwise, for the most part, our, the, uh, the CS that we're following on our team has definitely gotten up the hill. Um, but he's trying not to be exposed. You see the... Um, the boar sig is for some reason the boar sig is in the middle this is a little bit surprising and our charioteer is over here basically uncontested creating a crossfire so these guys and that are kind of stuck in the middle the ml2 the is3 the boar sig are all kind of stuck in this pocket and uh and you see our charioteer is is be creating that crossfire so there's nothing they can really do about him um because he's there right you, you they can't they can't cross to go flank him because um if they did, they would eat shots from the T-10 and the Carnarvon, so they're stuck. And uh, so then basically now they're down a tank. The Borsig, I'm not sure why the Borsig was in the front there in the fray. That's an interesting position. I'm not sure. Maybe they planned to have him go somewhere else and they got spotted early or something like that. But you can see now now the uh, the Charioteer is getting uh, getting side shots. And again, this, uh, this Bat Chat over here should be shooting him. I'm not sure why he isn't. But uh, you can see now the Skoda, the Skoda T50 is a one shot. The T10 is uh, is is trying to clean up a little bit here, but these guys have retreated into this position uh, where it's a little more, it's easier to defend, right? This little pocket that the the ML2 and the IS3 are in is uh, is easier to defend. The Bat Chat must have been clipping. That must have been the issue. So since the Bat Chat is now reloaded, he is dumping his mag into the uh, into the. Um, the charioteer so the charioteer has is being suppressed but you can see the, the skoda now is uh, is flexing around you can see him coming hey, coming to the other side you just saw the ping in the map and now um now because of that now the the uh he's gonna have these these uh butt shots and the emil he's gonna go ahead and clean this up and put another shot into the ice oh got picked by the is3 but that's okay he took a tank out of the game and since he was there and he was protected from the uh we we don't know where the 416 is but i'm suspecting that he's pretending to be a tank destroyer at uh, a5 which is a very common you know uh, that's basically what a 416 is is a tank destroyer disguised as a medium tank um so it's very interesting i think if i had to guess i would say the biggest issue there's two issues that i saw that that made this game decisive the one issue was the fact that this bat chat here, if I if it were me, you want something fast, but you want it to have consistent DPM, right? Because that that um when the charioteer was doing the things and putting side shots in, the, the bat chat was clipping, so he couldn't do anything about it. And so that's a really strong anchor position that he was in, uh, but there was a time where he was incapacitated, he was reloading. So if if I had to guess, I would say I want something fast that could get up there and be in that position and be stealthy, but also have a single shot so it had the DPM to be able to dish the pain and keep the uh, the bat uh, the charioteer suppressed and that whole position suppressed. The other thing is I don't know what the heck a Borsig's doing up front. Again, that must have been maybe maybe they intended to have him go in the back and then he got spotted early, or maybe he was supposed to be right here and he got spotted early. I'm not sure. I don't know. Um, I'm a little bit intrigued. You know, if you guys um, see that the folks in, on OP Hackers team, if you if, I'm intrigued. Let me know. I'm not trying to bag on you guys. It was it was a close game, um, but let me know. I'm curious. And so now the T10. It looks like the game is over, but it isn't necessarily over because the the Carnarvon is a one shot and he's kind of stuck behind this rock. And the T10 is going to approach. So the CS63 is on the hill. The Carnarvon's uh, stuck there, but they're all going to be pre-aiming this A5 position because we know the 416 is there. And there's only a certain like it's very difficult to uh, to assail that position from like D5. Right, so the best way to do it is the way that this T10 is doing it, where you kind of come up from the side, you get them spotted because they're around the side of these bushes, and then once he gets spotted, then it's over, right? Then the T10 can shoot him, and these three, these other two guys that are sitting there are, uh, are pre-aimed so they can nuke him, but you just, you know, the T10 was the one that had the hit points. Uh, the CX probably, CS probably could have done it too, but he was already in a really good position on top of the hill, so uh, now we're taking hits from the Bat Chat, and again, the game seems like it is over, but uh, the Bat Chat, if he's got a full clip, you know, I could see it. It's it's it could be close, right? Carnarvon's a one shot. This this uh, the T10s. Uh, what is it like a two or maybe a three shot? And the Bad Chat has a six round clip, if I'm not mistaken. So like, there's enough clip potential to take out two of the tanks in the right positions. So 
and then you had to he would have to create some space against the CS before he reloads and tries it again. So it's possible. Uh, now again, we're losing um, losing valuable hit points, right? Because what what the bat chat can do in the late game is trade one shot for five or six or whatever. But if you don't have the hit points to trade that one shot, then all of a sudden that doesn't work so well. So this is pretty much over at this point, especially now that he's a one shot, because now the CS knows that he just he doesn't have to be afraid of him, right? He's just I'm just gonna go boop you or something. I'm just gonna gonna go end this and that's the game but um you know that's just it's an example of even more quickly how things snowball and competitive so that was the attack we'll get to the defense all right and so this particular match again this team is on defense now and so we got a Udez with a camo net but this is competitive so my previous advice about never using camo net doesn't really apply they got two canarvans again the batch hat uh the t10 the vz this time instead of a cs Right, and then the other team has got your CS, the Emil, the Batch Hat, the 416, the, the Charioteer, and a, and a Borsig. Kind of similar setups, but you're noticing a few differences. This team doesn't have a CS, right? Or this team doesn't have the um, uh, uh, a CS, yeah, 63 like they did last time, which tells me a lot. Like, they're not trying to quickly get anywhere. They're going to try to turtle, right? They're just, all they have to do is make sure that nobody caps that base and nobody caps that base. And that's it. I and mean, the game is 10 minutes long. So it's a lot more beneficial to have those hit points, right? The CS-63 has, you know, I don't know exactly how many hit points. We'll see when he gets spotted, but uh, not as many as a VZ. So having the VZ being the overpowered monster that it is really helps a lot. And so you'll notice again that this batch head is using the same position as, uh, as we saw the previous team do, because again, this is just so powerful. So just be aware this is, this is useful then. Just let you guys know that this position does exist and it is pretty useful and you can be here in pubs and be a pain in the butt. Um, also notice the Canarvan. Looks like he's camping base and he's AFK. I don't think he's AFK. <laughs> but the main reason for this is the VZ is the VZ is over here behind this um, behind this rock and the uh, and the um, the 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 bush here. He's trying to provide some vision, right? So if somebody comes around the, the nine line, you'll be able to see them and put two shots in for free. The Canarvan's here on the hill because that's a really good spot. Um, this other Canarvan here is providing overwatch, right? So the T10 is providing vision on the 1-2 line. You really just want to see where people are before they get there, right? You want to see what the enemy tanks are doing before you set up and commit, right? And so in this particular case, this Canarvan is trying to keep it so that that bat chat doesn't get, doesn't get, uh, flanked. He's also going to try to, uh, try to make sure, like, that CS is almost able to get shot by the Canarvan. If the enemy team pushes on the T10, then the Canarvan flexes over to this, you know, very close to this rock to provide some some covering fire as well. So this Canarvan and the Udez are kind of in backstop positions, right? And the, the Udez is in the A5 perch, the very common A5 perch. Um, so that's kind of, you're, you're seeing kind of the, there's there's like two, it's like, it's almost like soccer, right? You got your forwards and then you got your midfielders and you got your couple of defenders, right? And so these, the you know, the Canarvan here is playing as a, as a defender, and so is the Udez, and then you've got your VZ and your Canarvan as your as your forwards. And so basically they're just trying to see what happens, or see what the enemy tanks are doing before they uh, get surprised, right? And um, yeah, so we're just going to wait and see, because again, you're on defense, you don't need to do anything. All you need to do is just sit and try not to bleed, right? And try not to, if you trade favorably, that's the whole thing. All right, the Simil two got uh, got a little confident over the hill, but now he knows he probably not have you had to you had probably had to assume that there was a thing a, a Udez in the A five area, but now we know for sure. CS sixty three gets a good shot in. There's all these, you know, um, it's it's a little bold to take a Udez because it's it's straight up it's not very flexible, right? It's very difficult. You need to go and do something aggressive. You really can't do that. But you're seeing now here, this is one of the competitive things, or one of the nice things about competitive, is that this guy was isolated, right? Well, and I guess this is pubs too, right? But this VZ was here, and he's like, all right, well, I'm just going to get in here and take this tank out of the game. Goes for a ram and a two-shot, and that's it. That's the end of that tier eight. And now, the Borsig also seems to be out, out of position and by himself. And we don't we don't exactly know where their charioteer is, but it's, it's reasonable to assume... Actually, I have no idea. I have no idea. I have no idea where he is but he hasn't been spotted so maybe he's back backing up the Borsig or maybe he's at back at, uh, at K5 but the VZ probably maybe maybe he could have taken the Borsig out but it's it also could be bait right you don't want to get stuck in a trap if maybe you think that Borsig is by himself so you run in there by yourself and then all of a sudden he doesn't he's not by himself and now you've got a problem 
Uh, so the CS, you notice here that the firing indicators are coming because I'm I'm spectating the uh, the boar sigs. The boar sigs getting blind fired, and um, that's very common, right? Now you're seeing this this bat chat is on the back side of this, and he doesn't probably know it yet, but he knows it now because he's being shot. The T10 and the Carnarvon have gone out of their little midfield and defender positions to take the uh, the bat chat out of position, right? Even though these guys are on defense, it's like all right, if you see an opening, so it's two tanks versus one. And they've got more hit points, so that definitely is going to be a win. So now you can you can take that tank out of the fight, so now we're up two tanks, and we have a lot of positioning, right? So now we know that um, we have really good a really good kill box set up for this, uh, this ML2 where he was last spotted than the CS. And again, the CS is probably the most important tank because it's their tier 10, right? It's There's only one tier 10 in these in each team, um, and so... It's really it's 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 if you can take that out of the fight, right? It's orders of magnitude more uh, more important. Um, but again, this is this is their defense. They've been able to just be aggressive enough and press the advantage with their with their when things were isolated, and uh, you can see the pinging on the map here. Um, but again, the Udes can't really be aggressive, and so uh, he's just going to hang back at a five. That's his one and only job. And you see now that the charioteer has uh, the ML two got on top of the hill. That's actually kind of interesting. Kind of interesting. And uh, not uh, not great, right? Because it's pretty hard to deal with that. But also, again, the the Udez is on on A5, so from here, it's pretty not a very hard shot at all. I'm surprised they did that, right? I mean, I, I can see you trying. If you once you probably want to take out, trying to just dig people out, right? And so that's probably their idea was, I'm assuming, to try to take the bat chat out, or or maybe you know getting cover with the charioteer would have been helpful. But at this point, the game is basically over because we still have five tanks and. <laughs> Muscles goes for the ram, very nice. Um, there's Now it's six tanks to one, and so the game is basically over. A charioteer can't carry against this many tanks, especially with, you know, uh, when they're this healthy. Uh, so that's basically the game. Um, it's not, and then Kenway, Kenway dies. So it, at this point, it's it's a little bit, I'm going to pause it. It's a little bit tricky to tell exactly. I mean, I'm not an expert. I'm not uh, in the whole competitive thing. I've seen it a few times. It's difficult to tell exactly what went wrong there, uh, with the exception of, it just seemed like the, the enemy team bled a little too much, right? Bleeding meaning you're taking damage and you're not dealing e at least that much or more, right? And then the other thing is then they had the, um, their, their bat chat AP didn't have any, any cover or, or, you know, there was no, there was no vision over at, uh, F3 inside the donut, they call it the donut, but it was easy for him to get pressed. Uh, and so that was, he was kind of out there. And again, that's that's one of the things I think is kind of not that great about this map is that, um, you know, you have that really great, really strong position at D4, Delta 4, but you don't have an equivalent position at G4. You know, you have you have a rock, but it's not nearly as good, right? The, the one at G4 allows you to hide behind it and really stay concealed. And the closest thing you have over here is is this, which is not nearly as good. So anyways... It's, uh, I suppose you could probably still use this if you had something that was low profile and had a strong turret, but it's not nearly as good as the other one. So it's just inherently you're a little bit of a disadvantage from this spawn. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm, it's an interesting game and it went a little bit differently than I thought. Um, yeah, that's, that's it. Uh, thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you on the next one.